On today's program, we are working with some pretty challenging patchwork. That's right. It's not half square triangles. It's not a nine patch unit. It's something much more involved. And if you take the time and make the steps go right in the process, you'll wind up with a beautiful, intricate quilt. On today's program, you will learn how to cut diamonds from a strip, how to make an eight-pointed star unit, and how to work with set-in seams. Funding for Fonz and Porter's love of quilting is provided by... For over 40 years, Babylock has been dedicated to the love of sewing by creating machines for sewing, embroidery, quilting, and serging. Babylock, for the love of sewing. Koala Studios delivers sewing furniture custom built in America. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. The Oliso ProZone Smart Iron, featuring the Auto Lift, engineered for the professional quilter and sewing enthusiast. And over fabrics, makers of a variety of fabrics, available at independent quilt shops and fabric stores. Coates and Clark, your source for sewing and quilting threads. OmniGrid, providing quilters with specialty rulers and accessories for over 25 years. Quilters Club of America, offering patterns and videos to the passionate quilter. We've got a great show for you today on Love of Quilting. You're watching the 1600 series of the program, and my co-host for this series is my daughter, Mary Fonz. Hi, Mom. You know, today is an exciting day on Love of Quilting because we are tackling a pretty significantly intense project. Yeah, it's sort of like getting your merit, your patchwork merit badge or your merit badge and patchwork today. Definitely. Because it's a block that, you know, it's not a beginner project. It's true. It's kind of more for an advanced quilter, but uh, anybody can learn it if you really, if you pay attention. Right. And if you practice. Right. Okay, the quilt is called Montana Hearth and it was made by Joni Holton and Melanie Gresseth and quilted by Amy Albrecht. And it's kind of a, a rolling star kind of design. There's no curved seams, but it has kind of a circular feel with those center pieces. Lots of little pieces. Uh, it, it creates a beautiful effect uh, altogether. Those center diamonds sort of come as a secondary design. Uh, once you put all your blocks together, those brown diamonds uh, kind or of squares. Or square, yeah, yeah. The squares, yeah, set on, set on point. Uh, they look set on point. Uh, it's, it's just a gorgeous quilt, and it involves... Um, laying in a lot of those little pieces, which is what we're going to talk about. You know, I was looking at the quilt, it kind of looks like a tile floor, yeah. like you would see in, in the east. You right, know, right, mosaic. Yeah, mosaic. Mm -hmm. So we have some different fabrics, and we've got one block laid out here today with a similar coloration, but some different beautiful fabrics mm -hmm. that we're working with. And you can see there are lots of pieces. I think there are 50 some odd pieces in each block in a 12 inch block. Nice. There's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to talk about cutting first. Great. We use diamonds, 45 degree diamonds, mm -hmm. they form the center star, so you can see the rust and the floral print diamonds, and then that same diamond is this beige uh, fabric mm -hmm. a little bit further out. So these are going to be 45 degree diamonds, and we're going to use inch and three-fourths strips. So I've laid strips, the three fabrics mm -hmm. out here that we're going to use, and you mm -hmm. can see what the diamonds look like when we cut them off. Right. So I'm going to just demonstrate cutting with the rust fabric. So I'm going to move these strips out of the way okay. so that I've got room to cut. This is one of those cuts, uh, you know, when you're ever you're cutting on a diagonal, uh, you've got an angle, uh, angular uh, cutting going on, you want to use those uh, great lines on your, yes. on your ruler. That's when right. a really great uh, ruler comes in handy because it's going to show you some of those... Uh, what, what degree are you? 45? 45. 45, 45, degree. 45. And so I'm going to lay my 45 degree line on the bottom raw edge of my strip. And it, you can see I need lots of space mm -hmm. because I have to turn it around. Okay, so when I make this first cut, wait, I haven't got the right line on. There's a lot there of lines on that. There, there we go. go. That's right. Okay, so when I lay this on, when I make my first cut, I actually want to overcut the first diamond. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you don't want to start clear at this end. Right. And I'm actually going to cheat a little bit because I have a diamond cut sure. and I think I can show everybody by laying this on here that I have to come far enough to the right, right. so that I can get a whole diamond there. Yep. Okay. So now when I make the first cut and I'm going to save this piece over here just a little bit, mm -hmm. that inch and three fourth that I'm measuring is not along the raw edge. Mm -hmm. And we get questions from customers a lot of times about this. We want to measure the inch and three-fourth from one cut edge 
to the next cut edge. Got it. So I'm going to put my 45 degree angle along the bottom, mm -hmm. okay, and I'm measuring, here's an inch, here's one fourth, two fourth, three fourths, three -fourths. like this. Okay, and then it's kind of like fitting everything in. I've got my 45 degree angle there. Yep. I've got my one and three fourths there, and so that's how I cut my diamond. Those little okay. boxes help. help they do. Too. They mm -hmm. do. Okay, so Great. we cut lots of diamonds of all three fabric colors, and that takes care of a lot of the pieces for our quilt. Right. Okay, the next piece we want to cut, I'll just take that. Is it the little house piece? No, it's going to be the little um, light colored. Right triangles that go around this star and these and are the pieces we're going to set in. Those are quarter square triangles, right? Right. And they occur here and they occur here at the edge. Okay. We want quarter square triangles because we want the straight grain to be on that long side mm -hmm. because we don't want stretch there. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whenever we want quarter square or uh, quarter square triangles, you mm -hmm. want me to cut or you want yeah, to cut? Yeah, you can go ahead cut, and cut, okay. but uh, I'm right in thinking you cut a square first, right? Yeah, cut a square first, <laughs> okay. yeah. And so I'm going to cut my square and it happens to be three and three fourths, but don't worry about writing all this stuff down. Believe me, you need the instructions for this block. Right. And to get the instructions, uh, just visit the website, fonsandporter.com, and go to the TV section, and it will give you all the information you need to go and find the uh, magazine that this uh, project appeared in, or whatever publication that it appeared in. You can find all the information about where to get this pattern on the website. At so, the TV visit. section. Yeah. Okay, so I cut, I'm actually cutting two squares because my fabric is folded, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go cut an X by cutting one way and then the other way and that gives me my straight of grain on the long side of the triangle which is what I want. Nice. Okay so that's all those little pieces. Okay now we need the little house piece. Right. And this piece occurs and kind of tumbles around mm -hmm. in, in the big floral. And it was great to use a big floral though because you, you, you know, really get to see it. You can show it okay. off. And you use a template to cut these pieces, correct? Yeah, you know, we kind of do. We use a template in a way. And what we actually did, let me get this rectangle here, is we cut a rectangle and then put this little template on it. And then, I've got one. Here's the one I wanted to show. Not this one. Whoops. Okay. There you go. <laughs> is I cut this, I draw a line here and then I can cut it with scissors mm -hmm. or with a rotary cutter to get that little house piece. Sure. So there's the little house pieces. And we really only have one more piece to cut, and that's the piece that occurs on the corners of the block. Mm -hmm. Half square triangles. Half square triangles, okay. because we want straight of grain on the legs on that. So that's just a matter of cutting a square, and I'm mm -hmm. not even going to cut it. I'm going to sure. show how we would, is cutting a square, cutting in half diagonally, right. so the straight grain's on the legs. Mm -hmm. We need four of those, so we do two squares, and we'd be done. Great. And that'd be only take, you know, an hour or so right. to cut all that stuff. <laughs> the, the funny thing is about teaching this this block is, I mean, actually doing it, and when we start getting into the sewing, you know, it takes a long time, probably three hours, four hours to make a single yes. block. I mean, we're just going to come out and say it right now. <laughs> yeah. It takes a while to make this block, and the cutting takes a lot of time because right. there's a lot of pieces in it. Right, so. and so we're not going to, we can't make it from start to finish in the uh, exactly. show, which we wish we could. But the important thing, one of the most important things, is that all of these pieces, and some of them you can see better than others, we have marked a sewing line on every single one of them. Every single one has to be marked. Right. You know, Try, trying to uh, do it without the markings would be really, I think you'd probably go a little, yeah. a little crazy trying to do it without the markings. So it may feel tedious, but marking each and every piece is going to only help you in the long run. I'm going to um, pick out one that's real easy for everybody to see the marks on. You can use a ruler like this. You may have one of these little rulers in your collection. Mm -hmm. I have a ruler that I've had for years that I got at an art supply store that's mm -hmm. thinner. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know, I just find it real easy to mark. It's got a beveled edge, doesn't it? So kind of the, rule, the, the pencil kind of hugs in there yeah. for it. So I'm going to draw my line. And in a way, this is kind of like an altered hand sewing method and this would be a great block to sew together by hand and it's there are true. hand piecers out there mm -hmm. but um, in the old days we used to make a template the finished size before we had the rotary cutter mm -hmm. BCRC B BRC BRC before, rotary, before rotary, cutter. rotary cutting Very and we'd funny. make a finished size template we would draw around it on our fabric and then we'd have these lines already sure. we wouldn't come in from the outside edge the reason we can come in from the outside edge is now with rotary cutting and rulers mm -hmm. we can cut very precisely nice okay so now we're ready. To, are you ready to sew? Ready to I'm construct? ready. I'm going to do it. I'm okay. ready to take on this challenge. It's a very specific um, method of sewing these pieces together. Right. It's uh, when you're setting something in, 
you only you sew those those marks that you made. Those, those are your stopping points. Right. Those those little X X marks the spot where you don't sew past. <laughs> right. So so we're going to start by making twosies of these diamonds that we need four of these twosies that make the uh, diamond star in the middle. So right. I'm going to give you two, and it's important when you get going, and we, we hap happen to have all our pieces marked already. Oh, lovely. So what we're going to do, Mary's going to sew this, and just like she said, she's kind of got a built-in stop sign here. Mm -hmm. You're going to line these pieces up, and she's going to sew, she's going to start sewing away from that corner. Right. Because for one thing, you want to leave all these seam allowances loose so we right. can set things in. Right. Plus, if you tried to start sewing right on that point, mm -hmm. it would come loose. Right. You wouldn't have, uh, you'd have two empty or loose ends right. and they would eventually pull apart. Okay. So you get them lined up exactly okay. the way you want. And if you start with the awkward side to the left, mm -hmm. because you have to, and I'll, I'll try to take this slow so people can see what's going on. If you start with your awkward side to the left. So the raw edge is going right. to the left. Right. Is that right? Am I doing that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Then you sew a few stitches down <clears throat> toward that crisscross. Toward the, I can think I can get one more stitch in there to go to my X. Bam. Okay. Yep. <laughs> then you switch it around you, with your needle down, you, with your machine in needle down position. Mm -hmm. You can pivot so easy on that. And on this that machine, needle. when you stop sewing, we have it set so that the, the um, presser foot comes up, lifts up a little bit already. Right, right. Okay, so now you head bound down back the and other I'm way. And I'm just sewing on that line that I marked, which is really actually pretty easy because it's all marked for you. Um, so then you come, you do the same thing, X marks the spot, and then you pivot it back around because you want to do the same thing on both mm -hmm. sides. So it's not loose down to there. To kind of set that, you know, set that stitch, if you will. And then just one, two, three. About three okay. stitches is fine. I like how this machine also secures the stitches so we're not like yanking this out of the machine. Exactly. Okay, so beautiful job. Thank you. If you're going to do anything, you want to be like a half a stitch shy instead of over. Over is bad. Over the okay. X is bad. A little okay. shy of the X is just All fine. Right. Okay, so we make four of those. Yeah. Our next step is to set in one of these triangles right in there. Well, you will just use this one you've made. Okay. So you're going to make four of these. So now what Mary's going to do is sew this side, mm -hmm. same drill as before, mm -hmm. very important, don't sew onto this stuff, right. and then <laughs> take it out, and then we're going to sew it around the other way. I'll let you position it the okay. way you want. Because you want all those inside little points to be open to receive your next stitch. Right. So again, I'm going awkward side, raw edge to my left, mm -hmm. going to give it a few stitches. And this you're sewing on the white this time, so it Yeah, I'm sewing on the well. white so I can see those marks. One more. Just living on the edge. <laughs> Get one more stitch in. Okay. And this is, I'm going to be very protective of this green fabric. Right. We want to make sure, make that sure that's I out of don't yep. sew on it. onto it. Okay. I'm pulling it out a little bit. Okay. I can do a little bit more here. Yeah, you know, you may not want the radio on or be talking to it's somebody true. when you're doing this it's because true. you have to concentrate. You really do. And, you know, like we said, not not a block that you're going to whip out, you know, quickly. Yep. <laughs> it's going to take Don't some time. Don't after midnight. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. So Beautiful. there I've, yep, I've come just a titch shy. Well, that's actually mm -hmm. pretty dead this on. Is good. And that's pretty dead on. And I did not sew on to the green. Super, okay. super important. So then at this point, what I do, because I need to set the other side, is I bring. Bring it around. Bring it around. I've got my pieces all marked up, beautiful, so I can I know mm -hmm. right where I need to sew. And the, the, the trick here is I don't want to sew on to the red. At, so. every, at every point, literally, mm -hmm. I don't want to sew onto that so you're gonna fabric. So I kind of pull it out a little bit. That's mm -hmm. a good tip Cindy showed us to, the way she does hers. So, okay, once more. How am I doing? Am you're I taking good. too long? No, I, I think you're doing good. Okay, so I'm going to grab that raw edge to the left. Oh, I don't want to get too hasty now. Okay. Haste makes waste. It does. Yeah, you don't want to throw your block away in tears. No, <laughs> no. Which, you know, the tear factor on this block, I mean the tear level, it's possibly high. Possible. Okay. So I'm just going to sew down. And those lines, you know, I mean, theoretically you could not have the lines go all the way, mm -hmm. but you need them. 
I'm giving it one, one more, more stitch. All right, now I'm sewing back out, and this one, this unit should be should be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's take a look. The moment of truth. Yes. Okay. Okay, this looks great. Yay! So we've got a great cleft there. Mm -hmm. You've got those three seams coming together, and really, once you've mastered this, you can make this block. Yep, absolutely. Okay? So we take this uh, two of these. Mm -hmm. Do we have another one here? Okay, uh, yeah. I'm going to show this. Okay. Okay, so we'd have two of these with our um, triangle set in. Right. Join those, and it looks like this. Right. Okay? Now, all that remains is to sew the, what you just did, mm -hmm. sew that in there. Mm -hmm. Okay? That gives you half your star. Right, okay? which looks like that. Right. And you'd get two star halves. Mm -hmm. So you've made this twosie. Mm -hmm. You've made this twosie. You add this. Mm -hmm. Same over here, and you put these two together. Okay. Now, I think we're going to go ahead... Well, I think we've got so much to show. I think yeah. we're not going to sew this. There's okay. a lot to sew. And we've, we're going to do the same thing. And I think by right. sh keeping this out on the sewing center, we can explain. It's the very same thing. We would put this in the sewing machine, mm -hmm. and we'd stitch f away from. And I'd flip it so the raw edge, you know, is on the other side. Right. Right? Yeah, you'd start. Start. You would start like this, right. Mm -hmm. So we'd come to that end. Mm -hmm. Pivot right on that mark, and I know right. it was our great camera. Everybody can see that mark. And our great manicures. Yeah, yes, our great manicures. <laughs> then we'd turn it around, right? And we'd stitch across this to that point, mm -hmm. and pivot around again, and sew back. Right. That gives us this center star. And like it is this. gorgeous. It is lovely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And on, we can look on the back, and we can see everything is lying flat. Mm -hmm. We've kind of like popped our center mm -hmm. and pressed this. So this forms this nice flat star in the middle. Looks really okay. good. <laughs> okay, now we only have two more kinds of units to make. Oh, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> and we kind of had fun with these naming these. There's this is our little house unit. We you know we cut that before. Right. So we have to add those ba those tan diamonds to each kinda, side. Kind of gives you the bat. We call it the bat. Yes, it's a little it's a little bat <laughs> unit. Okay. It's the same drill, and our red thread yep. shows up really well here that we've just sewed. We don't go. Into no Don't go past the X. Okay. So that's Mr. Bat. Mr. Mr. Bat. Batman. Now, once you get Mr. Bat, you need four of those. Well, no, you need, you need, mm. you need four of those. You need four of those yep. because then you're going to do just like Mary showed. Mm -hmm. You're going to set these in. Now, when you set these guys in, you can actually sew across to the because it's the outside. I'm going to take it over to the block and show you that this is going to be the outside edge of the block. So you could sew off. Right. But my recommendation is not to do that because <laughs> once you think, oh, this one doesn't count, I can sew out because it's the end of the block. Then you're going to be sewing on a point you need to set. So <laughs> just right. don't do it. Just use the method for the whole block. You'll be much happier. It's okay if those ones on the outside edge are loose, too. It's, it's okay. going to be fine. It's all going to come okay. together, we promise. So that's a little Mr. Bat. And then the other one is a little reverse bat, mm -hmm. or it looks like a little tabletop. Mm -hmm. Okay? So once you've made four of those and four of those, mm -hmm. you have this. Ah. Let, me, let me do it this way. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's our center star. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we're going to take this kind of unit right here. And we're going to put one on each four sides, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what give us, gives us this. When we join this, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. We're going to yep. open out everything. Same method. I know our marks don't show up as well on the dark green fabric, but it's the same thing. You bend everything out of the way. Yep. You start away from the corner, mm -hmm. sew to the corner, come back into the corner. And another good, uh, a good thing to mention, you know, usually, and you've taught me this, you know, Always snip your patchwork, snip your ends, you know, these little guys, these little dog ears here. You know, the, the, the habit that is good to get into when you're making patchwork is to snip those little ends off. But in fact, on this block, it's better to just wait. Wait till you've got your whole block done because you never know when you're going to need those points to show you where you're at, to show you where you're setting to, things in. To hang so, on to, to hang, kind of. Yeah, and to hang on to. So wait till the end of the block before you start snipping those dog ears or, you know, you might be uh, snipping off your guides. Right. Don't, you don't do want to do that. Yeah. Okay, so what happens next? Next. And you know, like we said, this block takes like, yeah. I don't know, three hours. You don't want to, don't start the clock. Right. So we don't have time to really do the whole thing. But I think if you, if you watch what happens next, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to kind of separate this out. You want to fit this guy in here. You might think your first thing would be to sew across the bottom. That's probably my instinct is like, because okay. Because we did it here. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. But our advice to you is sew this side. The left okay, side in. Right. Then pivot and sew here. Mm -hmm. Then sew this side okay. and pivot in here. So your last one across the bottom, we found the best way to do that was to finish by sewing across the bottom. Okay, okay? kind of lock it down with that Kind of lock it down. And with this super precise cutting, 
super pre precise sewing, you know, everything fits together mm -hmm. and you're going to have a nice star. Chances are your 20th block or your 21st block, because you might throw the first one away, Maybe. is going to be better than your first block was. It's true. And okay. I found learning this method that you just get better and better at it as you go. And it doesn't take long to get better and better at it. But the, that first few times, you know, you'll, you'll go past the X, you'll, you know, get frustrated, you'll sew a side down that you just... Forgive yourself. It's fine. Just keep 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 practicing it, and because you have to do that method so many times in this block, you will get the hang of it. Better. Mm -hmm. So when you get your block to this point, hopefully it looks this lovely. Oh, of course it will. All that's left to do is to add these triangles, these last triangles, and it's it's these corner triangles that are what form that block, that uh, secondary design you were talking right. Mary, about. Right. I call uh, this a diamond, but I meant you know that well, it was a. Well, it's squares. It's on point. They look kind of diamond like. Right. Right. Yeah. The right. The right diamond, you know. The right, the right <laughs> diamond could definitely look like that. Like that. So you add these corners, and then you know your block is done. So it, if let's just say you might be satisfied with your patchwork if you just made one block. You might feel that that was enough Montana hearth for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you could put it into a pillow and like our sewing specialist Cindy Hathaway gorgeous. did. She added another coordinating fabric as a frame here, and yet another one, and just made a beautiful toss pillow that you know would be the envy of anyone. It would be. It's fabulous. Or you might decide that you love it. I actually kind of do love it. I like the challenge. And you could create a gorgeous quilt uh, like Joni Holton and Melanie Gresseth did. Uh, and Amy Albrecht quilted that. And it's just absolutely stunning, I think, with all those pieces and the envy of the Quilt Guild, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's Montana Hearth. And so, you know, we hope that you want, may want to to try something more challenging. We love easy quilts, we love hard quilts, so we hope you've enjoyed uh, being with us on our quest for our patchwork merit badge today. Nice. Grab a pencil, tips and other useful information coming up next. Our first tip today is from Sandra Sager from Hendersonville, Nevada, and it's a fussy cutting tip. Mm. When you're working on a project that you really need to focus where that fabric's going to mm -hmm. turn out, like in a peekaboo quilt, sure. or any quilt where you know you really need a circle that's going to be just right, mm -hmm. you can use your uh, big square, mm -hmm. uh, use a dinner plate, or you know, any, or trace a circle that you have sure. with a dry erase marker, and that will help you determine if your motifs on your fabric are going to work for yeah, it. Yeah, I kind of want to get his little tail in yeah, there. Yeah, get his little tail in there, and nice. then you just, you know, you rub, it, rub it off with a paper towel when you're done, and you're, you haven't harmed your ruler at all. Exactly. Or very, your fingers. It wipes right yeah, off. Yeah, very neat idea. My first tip today comes from Pearl Davids, and she lives in Simi Valley, California. It's beautiful out there. And she has a tip for getting rid of those little bits of leftover thread when she rips out her stitching and of course I don't have to rip out stitching <laughs> ever so I don't really need this tip but uh, we never for, do that for anybody else who does what she does is she takes a little bit of painter's tape and makes a little piece tape like roll. that the little tape roll and it is just perfect oh, it's like great. magic for pulling out those little threads instead of pulling them out with your fingernails and you yeah. know and having them all over your sweater yeah, and, and see stuff. look they just come out on the tape just like clever. that clever pretty slick Very clever pearl. um my this tip i'm going to use the same prop for two tips and the first one is a hand quilting tip this is from julia jensen from petaluma california and when she's done hand quilting for the day she ties a little um she has a uh, safety pin with a little ribbon tied on it she pins that on her quilt near her needle and it helps her locate her needle the next day mm, very smart the other tip we're going to use this little prop for is from Alnita Mitchell from Claremore, Oklahoma. And she says that when she is binding a quilt and she finishes for the day, she mm -hmm. hasn't finished the binding, um, and she leaves her needle parallel to her uh, edge of her binding, mm. she's come back the next day and found her needle has slipped out. Sure. So what she does when she finishes for the day is tie a knot on the end of that thread so that that needle can't fall off. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Simple, but very simple. Useful. Very useful. Cool. Um, this next tip is really smart. This is a Sa Sandy Fong, uh, F O N G <laughs> instead of F O N S. Uh, sent this from Gold River, California. Lots of Californian tips yeah. today. She loves the Fonz and Porter Dresden plate pin cushion for keeping her sewing machine needles organized. She puts the uh, oh. with a fine point marker. She'll write the size and the type of the needle on each section, and then when she changes her needle, but she wants to keep it for another use, she puts it in the right um, the right section of her Dresden plate. Pin cushion, and I think that That's is very clever. Very clever. And you know, um, you really should put a new needle in your machine every 
six hours of sewing, mm -hmm. and uh, so we should probably change our needles more often. But if you did just a little technique with a needle, you would want to save that and use it again. So mm -hmm. it's a great idea. You could even have used needles in one part of it. That's exactly. very clever. Um, this is, I love this tip. I'm going to do this one next because this, this really helps. This is, a, you know, your uh, uh, foot feet for mm -hmm. your sewing machine, and if you have a tile or wood floor where you sew, it's always sliding around. So what uh, Maxine Kane from New Albany, Pennsylvania did was just attach a couple of uh, adhesive back uh, floor protectors to the bottom of her foot pedal to keep it from sliding. Very smart. We would love to hear from you and love to get your tips as well. So if you've got tips to send us, please send them to Love of Quilting at P.O. Box 171, Winterset, Iowa, 50273. Or you can send them to FonzandPorter.com, the tip section of our website. And if we use your tip, you'll get a subscription to Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting magazine. See you next time. Additional quilting ideas from Marianne and Liz are available in Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting magazine. A one-year subscription contains 60 or more projects, easy-to-follow step-by-step instructions, and our tips, techniques, and shortcuts. In addition to the magazine, you'll get two DVDs containing all 13 shows from the 1600 series and two additional booklets with extra projects, tips, and techniques. The cost is $29.97. To order, call 866-729-9601 or visit our website, FonzandPorter.com. You can visit our website for free quilt tips, so easy quilting lessons, and slideshows of spectacular quilts. Download free quilt patterns, see supply lists for TV projects, join our quilting community, and more. Log on to FonzandPorter.com. Funding for Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting is provided by... For over 40 years, Babylock has been dedicated to the love of sewing by creating machines for sewing, embroidery, quilting, and serging. Baby Lock for the love of sewing. Koala Studios delivers sewing furniture custom built in America. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. The Oliso ProZone Smart Iron featuring the Auto Lift, engineered for the professional quilter and sewing enthusiast. And over fabrics, makers of a variety of fabrics available at independent quilt shops and fabric stores. Coates and Clark, your source for sewing and quilting threads. OmniGrid, providing quilters with specialty rulers and accessories for over 25 years. Quilters Club of America, offering patterns and videos to the passionate quilter.